In this video, we're going to complete example one. There are two examples we're doing here, and both of them are future value problems. It says Sharon has an investment account which receives an interest rate of 5% per annum compounded annually. She deposits $5,000 into her bank account at the end of each year. How much money will she have in her account after 10 years? Usually when we do a problem like this, we would start by calculating R, or our interest rate. Now we're told that it's 5%, but we need to convert it to a decimal. We can divide this by 100, and we get the decimal 0.05 for R. Now when we look at the formula above, they don't use the pronumal R. Instead, they say rate. So that one's quite obvious. We know that our rate is going to be 0.05, when we put it into our formula. We also have a repayment here. Sharon deposits $5,000 in her bank account at the end of each year. Usually we use the pronumeral capital D for our repayment. When we look at the formula above, we can't see a capital D, but we can see PMT. This stands for payment. So PMT will equal our $5,000 repayment. You'll also notice it has NPER on it. That stands for the number of time periods, which is 10 years. So we'll write that NPER is going to equal 10. There are also some other arguments here. You'll notice that both of them are within square brackets. That means that these arguments are optional. We don't have to use them. I'll explain what they mean anyway. PV stands for present value. If Sharon had started with some money already in her investment account, that amount would have gone in place of PV. And finally, type. Type is talking about whether the money goes in at the beginning of the time period or at the end of the time period. Now we can see that the repayment goes in the end of the time period, at the end of the year. When this happens, you don't have to write the type. Now, for the type, you either put the numbers 0 or 1. 0 means the end of the time period, and 1 means the beginning of the time period. By default, if you leave these two blank, Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets will put the numbers zero in there automatically. So if you leave these blank, it means that your present value was zero dollars and your type is zero as well. Zero meaning that the repayment goes in at the end of the year. This is the case for question A, hence why we're going to leave these two arguments blank. So let's go into Microsoft Excel. I've also copied across all the values that we need to plug into our formula. I want to remind you that if you don't have access to Microsoft Excel, go on to Google Sheets and it's the same formula. Anyway, firstly I'm going to pick a cell. I'll pick C7. doesn't really matter which cell you click on. Then I'm going to start my formula. Equals FV for future value, then open your brackets. Now the great thing about Excel is that it will show you the formula at this point. We can see next we need to put in our rate, which is 0 0.05. 0 0.05, comma. Next we need to put in NPER, the number of time periods, which is 10. You might notice that on the formula they have a space, and I didn't put a space here. It doesn't really matter if you put in a space or not. Comma. Next we need to put in PMT, or our repayment, of $5,000. And after that we have our present value and type, which we're going to leave blank. So we'll close off our brackets and press Enter. Now the first thing you might notice is that we got a negative solution. This doesn't make a lot of sense. This is an investment. We want it to be positive. I'll show you how to fix this. First, we click on the cell. 
up here at the top, this is where you edit your formula. Now my repayment of $5,000, I'm going to make that negative. And then I'm going to press enter. And you'll see that it's changed into a positive amount, which is what we wanted. So why did we need to make our repayment negative? It's all to do with what are known as ingoings and outgoings. Imagine you have a wallet. Ingoings represent money that is going into your wallet. So ingoings are positive because when money goes into your wallet, all of a sudden you have more money to spend. Outgoings represent money going out of your wallet. Outgoings are negative. This is because when money goes out of your wallet, you've got less money to spend. Now, if you think of a repayment, this is an example of an outgoing. Because when you make a repayment, you've got to take money out of your wallet and put it into your investment account or your loan account. That is why in Microsoft Excel, we had to make our repayment of 5,000 a negative. And then we got a positive amount for our future value, which is what we wanted. So let's write this down as our solution for question A. 62,889 dollars and 46 cents is how much money Sharon will have in her investment account after 10 years. All right, let's now move on to question B. Gavin has a debt of $310,500 on his home loan. His loan has an interest rate of 3.5% per annum, which is compounded monthly. He makes regular repayments of $1,000. $560 each month for 10 years. How much better off will he be financially if he makes repayments at the beginning of the month instead of at the end of the month? So we'll start by finding the values of each argument that we're going to put into this formula. We'll start with rate. To find our rate, we need to take our percentage, which is 3.5%, and we need to divide it by 12. This is because we're compounding it monthly. There are 12 months in a year. We also need to divide this by 100, which converts it to a decimal. Now we could perform this calculation on our calculator, but it's unnecessary because Google Sheets and Microsoft Excel are perfectly capable of performing this calculation. So we'll leave it like this for now. We also need to find the number of time periods in PER. And when we look here, we can see it's over a period of 10 years. Remembering that we're making our repayments monthly. So we're going to go 10 and we're going to times it by 12 because we want to see how many months are in 10 years. That comes out to 120. Next is PMT, which stands for our repayment. Our repayment is $1,560 monthly. $1,560. Now you might remember that repayments need to be negative because repayments are outgoings. They're going out of your wallet. In fact, looking back at question A, I would like to change my repayment to a negative now as well. All right, next we've got our present value. And this particular question has a present value because at the beginning, Gavin owed $310,500. The present value being the initial investment or debt. So PV is going to be $310,500. $500. Now some of you would look at this and think this should be a negative number because this is a loan. This is an amount of money that I owe. 
but we need to think more about outgoings and ingoings. Let's go back to the wallet. If Gavin owes the bank $310,500, it means that the bank has actually given him this money. That's why he owes it to the bank. So it's actually an ingoing. It's gone into his wallet. And because of that, he now owes a large amount of money. So our present value, which is a loan, is actually a positive amount. So we'll go to Microsoft Excel now. I've copied across the values of these arguments. And I'll pick C15 equals FV for future value and then open my brackets. The first thing we need to enter is our rate and we're actually entering in a calculation. We're going 3.5 divide 12. Notice that I use the forward slash instead of the divide symbol and then forward slash 100 comma. Next we need to put the number of time periods which is 120 comma then our repayment which is negative 1560 and then our present value which is 310,500 comma now for the type for now I'm just going to put a zero down I'm going to close my brackets and press enter this gives me the amount of negative 216,000 $641.35 and this makes sense this time we're talking about a loan so we want a negative amount so we'll copy that across for now so we have a future value which is negative and it's $216,641.35 now this is what you would get if you made your repayments at the end of the month so we'll write end here. That's because we put a zero in for our type. Now if you look at the question, it says how much better off will he be financially if he makes repayments at the beginning of the month instead of at the end of the month. So we also need to see what happens when we make repayments at the beginning of the month. So we go back to Excel, click on our cell here, and change our zero up above to a 1 and then press enter. We now have the amount negative $215,988.73. We'll copy this across now. FV equals negative $215,988.73 which happens when you put your repayment in at the beginning of the month. We can see that when he puts his repayment in at the beginning of the month, he's better off. He owes less money. Now the question asked, how much better off will he be financially? So how do we answer that? Well, we need to find the difference between these amounts to answer that question. To do that, we can really just ignore the negatives. And I'm going to use the calculator for this one. So $216,641.35 minus $215,988.73 gives us $652.62. $652.62. So this is how much better off he will be financially. I should really show my working for this. Anyway, that concludes our lesson for example one. Remember to read the description below for links to workbooklets that relate to this video.